with a switch and it was change, same. And I said, if you had a choice, uh, where would you keep that switch at? And I don't think I'd ever switch it to change because I like staying the same. But there, there is good change. Let's pray. Father, I pray, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you bless your word, Father. Lord, give me the words to speak, Father, that will get the message across. And that these ears would hear it, Father, and that it would go into the heart, Father. And that your word, Lord, going into the heart, Lord, would do good to all men. And cause us to grow and to be blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. That first scripture we had this morning, or just now, I did that exact thing at work today. I was sitting in my, in my seat. And I have been under attack this recently, like I don't know how the devil's got time for any of y'all. <laughs> I really don't. But I'm sitting there and I feel weak, I feel like I, I can't get up and get to work. And so I started singing. Nobody was in there. If they were in there, they'd say, what is your problem? <laughs> but it's like... I got strength in my legs, I can walk, I can talk, I can get up, I can stand up, I can do this because God's blessed me. I sound foolish, but this is what God says, and I'm just going to say what he says, because he said it, and he must mean it, and it's up to me to believe it, it's up to me to confess it, and it's up to me to experience it. So, I did the word today. (laughs) <laughs> you know, you get into the Word, and the Word is kind of like flypaper. You know, you get over here, and you, and you get stuck on it. You didn't mean to go that way. You was going this way, but you get over here, you're stuck over here, and you flip it over here, and you get stuck to this because it all sounds so good. Yeah. So I like to talk about that. I like to talk about this. I, I can't do this. I've got to stay here. I've got to stay there. I can't go everywhere. But in time, you can get just about everywhere. But the word is good. <laughs> Willie, will you put up Deuteronomy 32.11? 32.11? Um, many years ago, a, friend, a preacher friend of mine, a good old fundamental Baptist, gave me a tape by... Uh, uh, well, I can't remember the guy's name now, uh, a Baptist preacher down in Georgia, and his, his theme was eagles. He was always preaching about eagles. And the name of one of his tapes was, As an Eagle Stirs Up Her Nest. Now, some people may not know what that means. As an eagle that stirs up her nest, that flutters over her young, God spread abroad his wings, and he took them, he bore them on his pinions. When, when an eagle grows up and gets to that point where they, they start and flap on the, on the edge of the nest and they're about ready to go, the mother eagle does something. See, she built that nest with branches and then sticks and then leaves. And then she'd go out and kill a squirrel or a monkey and line that thing and make it nice and warm and comfortable and cozy. And she'll take down out of her own breast and fill that thing up with down. Now when that little baby is born, that baby, if he could say and think, he'd say, this is good. This feels good, mama. And then mama gets on top of him when the storm's going over and she keeps him warm. And this is the life. And everything's good. And everything's wonderful. And he's in his comfort zone. But things change and you got to take that switch and flip it from same to change and the baby eagle doesn't flip that switch because he don't want to but mama does and the comfort zone gets rezoned and I know our comfort zone gets rezoned maybe when we don't want it to Uh, change can be good Change will come. Change is going to happen, regardless. If you looked in the mirror lately, you know that change is real. 
I remember when I'd get out of bed and I'd wake up. I was a kid, it would be Saturday morning, and this is the way I woke up. I'd be laying there and pop my eyes be open. It's Saturday. Jump up and get with it. Now, It, it has changed. Every morning, I feel like I should call 911 because I've got an emergency. That alarm says get up, and my body, it doesn't want to. But I'm employed, and I have to. Well, Willie, we put up Daniel 221. Look up my note here. Well, if I was at home, I'd go right to it, but since I'm standing up here, it's a little harder. Daniel 2.21, I know you got it. He changes the times and the seasons. Well, we know God changes the seasons. And what if the seasons didn't change? Can you imagine 12 months of summer or 12 months of winter? So change must be good also. There's a time for change. And he changes the times and he changes the seasons. He removes kings and sets up kings, and it's good that he does that. We can't have the same king for 60, 65 years. We change every now and then. Now I want to read a note on this. Uh, God tells us that, or Daniel tells us that God changes the times and the seasons, and this is not only true in the natural world, but it's true in our lives. His timing and his ways are always perfect. Well, we know that. Are you fully trusting him to bring the changes you need in your life at the time that's right? He's doing a good work in you, so I encourage you to cooperate with the changes he brings, and you'll be glad that you did. Change. I like to come up with, with natural examples, experiences that I've had, because it it, 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 when I look in the Word and I see what the Word says, and then I look at my life and I see the examples, it's like they marry up, they dovetail. And it's like, yes, Lord, that's exactly what I've been through, or that's exactly what I see in the natural. And I used this example the other day about uh, my wife's family up in Roland, North Carolina. Now, her uncle was the, was the chief of police, and it was like Mayberry up there. It was back in the 50s and the 60s. And, well, it was Black Mayberry except for one thing. He, he would kill people on a regular basis. Oh, wow. <laughs> he had to kill them. He told me, he says, yeah, Rick, I had to kill that guy. Now, that was in the 50s and the 60s. You can't do that now. But he, he took his job seriously. But all her aunts and all her uncles lived up there in Roland. And when I met my wife, when I came from Japan, before I even married her, we went up to Roland for a visit one day, and I enjoyed it. I enjoyed Mayberry. I enjoyed the, uh, the atmosphere. I enjoyed meeting her relatives and all her aunts and her uncles, and, and uh, life was good. And I got a job later where I'd drive up through there, and I'd stop in and see them, and they'd make a, a big feast, and I'd have dinner, and I'd head on back to Charleston. I really enjoyed that. They're all gone. All of them. They're all gone. They're all out the cemetery now. It ain't Mayberry no more. They're all in the cemetery. You know, it changed. It, it was the way I liked it. And then it changed. And uh, I've lived in my house for 40 years, another example. And across the street, I, we had our neighbors. For 40 years, that house has been there. And after 40 years, I, woke, I walked outside the other day and I saw a for sale sign. Change. I liked it the way it was, you know? I really did, I liked it. But it changed. 
And uh, trouble, trouble is change. Now all change is not trouble, but all trouble is change. And I'm going to give you some examples of what's happened to me just this past month. I know last Wednesday, Troy gave us a list of what he was going through. And I thought, boy, that sounds like me. But the reason I'm sharing this with you is so you can kind of identify with what I'm saying. And then we'll go into the Word and see what the Word says about it. Because if we don't see what the Word says about it, what difference does it make what I say about it? But this past month, I've had my job, the job I have now, for over 12 years. Just this past month, it's like I'm in a vice. Everything has changed. Uh, we're restructuring and realigning from the top down. And I got repositioned, you know. I'm in a different position than I was before. And at first, mentally, I resisted it. Why? <laughs> I like same. And it went change. And I didn't switch it. Somebody else switched it on me. Now, I resisted, but I've come around. I, I know what I'm supposed to I'm supposed to be obedient, you know, to my master. And my boss, in that sense, is my master. He says, this is what I want you to do. This is what I want you guys to do. This is what we're going to do. I said, all right. And in the midst of all that, one of, one of the fellows came into the office one morning, and he made a comment to me that offended me. It offended me. And then I thought about it. You know, I needed to hear that. You know, when David was, uh, was offended by the guy that was shouting curses at him, and his, his bodyguard says, you want me to run him through? I wouldn't have run this guy through, but I didn't like what he said. But then I realized, you know, Lord, that's from you, because he's right. And so I was corrected in here. I didn't tell him that. You know, that's between me and the Lord. <laughs> but I was corrected, and, and I needed that. And then I actually felt good about it. I felt good about the discipline. I know I've shared with you guys before, in the Sunday school at least, that when my daughter was younger, she corrected me one day. And that is so sweet to my heart that my daughter, who I love, I was being a little rough on her, she corrected me. Now, she didn't do it out of disrespect one bit. She says, well, you, do, you did this and I thought, she got me. I shouldn't do that. I shouldn't have said what I said to her. So she corrected me, and I received it, and it's sweeter than honey when you receive correction and you know you need to be corrected. Um, you don't want to get off course. If you get off course, you're going to miss your, miss your destination. Um, Two weeks ago, three weeks ago, Scott was driving home from church, and he got in a wreck. Scott calls me his dad brother. I'm his dad, and I'm his brother. He hasn't made his decision yet, which it is, <laughs> but he calls me his dad brother. Well, when my son gets in a wreck, it comes on me. I've got to take care of it. So now I've got a car wreck I've got to deal with. And then at the same time, the AC in my car was acting up. My water pump was leaking. I don't have time for all this. And this is pressure, and this pressure is coming against me. Um, but you know, in the meantime, I fixed the AC, the, the AC problem. The car is repaired. Now see, trouble comes, but trouble doesn't stay. If trouble stays, then we're doing something wrong. So when that trouble comes, the first thing you do, you see trouble, and then your countenance falls. But you can't stay there. You get up like I did this morning. My feet are good. My legs are good. I'm strong. I can, I can climb the stairs. I can do the job I got to do. And you just talk to yourself and tell yourself, I'm okay. I can do it. Now, I'm going to tell you a story that I think got... When I give a message, I usually give two different subjects, either about offense or about grace. 
So I think somebody misunderstood Sunday and thought I was talking about being offended, which I was. But more than being offended, it was just another problem. It was more trouble that caused change in my life. Now my neighbor, I spoke with her today. We had a good conversation. You know, she's like mom, you know, we, we just take care of her. Um, she's the, Missy is the best friend that she has in the entire world. I'm not exaggerating. But I've done things for my neighbor all these years. When you crawl under somebody's house to remove a dead possum, then you've got to be a good neighbor because the odor is coming up into the house. And then I got sent down there to get it. But I got something out of it. She bought the mask for me. Yeah. So anyway, she needed this fence put up, and I put the fence up, and she gave me all the rules and all the laws. Well, you can't do it like this because I've got to have this, and I want it done like that, but you can't do it like Can you do it like this? No, I can't do it like that because of this, that, and the other. Well, I'll do it like this. Well, can you do it like that? Well, I'll have to, I had to make changes. And I am a recovered perfectionist. And so I want to do everything right. A little bit like Frank. I want to do everything right. I want to do everything just precisely. And it's got, it's got to be accurate. So I did her fence. I was doing an excellent job in my own opinion. And she came out one evening. And I don't... Missy was out there, and she didn't tell me. She let Missy know that she was extremely displeased with my handiwork. I had a hard time accepting that. She's been my neighbor for 40 years, and she had never made me that mad before. She made me mad. And this is the same lady who one day asked me to come and rescue her dog who was choking, and I go in her backyard doing the Heimlich maneuver on a dog speaking in tongues. Now she should be, she should be grateful. The dog lived. But I didn't like the dog. So I saved a dog I didn't like. But I did it for her because you, the Bible says you've got to love your neighbor. It don't matter whether her dog is nasty or whatever. But she ran into her house, slammed the door, talking about that fence. I don't know if I can handle this. I got upset, cooled off a few days, went back over there and talked to her. Okay, now what is it about the fence you don't like? I had to have my interpreter with me, my wife. Tell her... <laughs> And I'm standing right there. So my head is getting compressed like, like I don't know what, like, I just, it, I'm getting pressurized. Missy said my eyes were glazing over. I guess there was a little bit of anger going on there. But I didn't say a word. And finally, it came to the point I said, I'll fix it. And she said, okay, good. And I thought to myself, no, 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 you ain't getting out that, that easy. Let's talk about this. I'll fix it. But we got to get all this stuff straight. So we got it all straight. My whole point in saying this is it was trouble to me. It was change. I didn't like it. All right? Hmm? Oh. I took, yeah. This lady has apologized over and over and over since. So... She's off the list. She's okay now. <laughs> All right. Last Sunday, I ended up in the ER. 500 bucks later, here I am. That's trouble. That's change. I don't need that stuff. And uh, I had an inner ear or something going on. I just, I was going this way and my feet were going that way. <laughs> I got grass I need to cut, and I can't cut it. I've been interrupted every single Saturday. And that grass is doing nothing but saying I'm getting taller and taller and taller. <laughs> I'm trying to finish my roof. It's hard to finish the roof. We had a leak here back in the kitchen. Some of you probably saw it. When I went back there and I saw that leak and all that I got to do, 
So I don't need this. But it feels good fixing something like that, though. And then my, my mother-in-law's toilet not only stopped up, but wouldn't even fill up on the same night as that. And what's the most important fixture in the house? Your toilet. Toilet. Hello. You got to have a toilet. I go home and my shower knobs won't work. They, they, they flip it. I can't take a shower. It's either a hot shower or a cold shower. Now, it has been so bad this past month that Missy called me on the phone the other day and she says, well, you want to know what's next? You want to hear the next thing? I said, just go ahead and tell me. And then it was news about Scott. And it's like, that was last week. This week, it was worse. How can it get worse? How can it get worse? And yet it does. All right. I don't know if last month was April or Job. It was one or the other. Now, Willie, go to 2 Corinthians 4. Now we're going to get back into the Word because you can't stay out there outside at night like that. So let's come on inside, turn the light on. 2 Corinthians 4. Let's see if I can find it here. And since Sunday, I read more, and it just got gooder and gooder. I got stuck to it, and I couldn't get off of it. So 2 Corinthians, uh, I'm sorry, 4.16, Willie. We are changing. Changing is all around us. But look up. It's going to get better. Therefore, we do not become discouraged. You want to bet, Paul? <laughs> but we don't become utterly spiritless. We don't be become exhausted. Uh, Paul, <laughs> we, we get exhausted. We get wearied out through fear sometimes. Admit it. It happens. It gets in there, and you get spiritless, and you get exhausted. You get wearied because of the fear. And this outer man is starting to perish. It's progressively decaying and wasting away. I can prove this to you. You, you probably don't know this, but here, this is a little extra here. Um, Aunt B, let's go back to Mayberry, and Mother Teresa and Irene Ryan, Beverly Hillbillies, Granny, and there's... There's others, but there was another one I was going to mention. Did you know they were all good-looking women when they were young? All of them. They were good-looking. They were attractive, like God made women to be. But look what happened to them as they progressively decayed and wasted away. But that's, that's, that's bad news, but there's good news coming. See, we all get old, and we age, and we waste away, and we don't like it. I can't do things today that I used to do. When I was in my 20s, I'd get up on a Saturday morning, rake the entire yard, pile of leaves this big and about 8, 10 feet, put a match to it in one day, and it's gone. I can't do that today. I just can't do it, and it bugs me. But I guess that's the way it's supposed to be because I'm wasting away. I'm decaying. But yet my inner man is being progressively renewed each day. It's kind of like, like a graph. You see a graph line going down, and then you see another one coming up, and they cross somewhere in there. But we may be getting older and uglier, but we're getting better and prettier on the inside. That's what the Bible says. And next verse, Willie. For our light... See, all that stuff I told you was light. Momentary affliction, <laughs> it's all momentary. This slight distress of the passing hour, slight. I just, I have trouble taking it as slight. This is Paul speaking. Paul's looking in another direction. You know, we got to live this life, and I know Paul had to live his life, and I know he wrote some of the gospel in prison and sewage, is what I hear. And I know he had it rough. But he's looking another direction. 
He's looking up. And it do us good to look up when our trouble comes. Is ever more and more abundantly preparing and producing and achieving for us an everlasting weight of glory. Now, what does a toilet have to do with establishing me with an everlasting weight of glory? I don't know, but it's got something to do with it. And I know this is talking about the gospel and it's talking about eternity. But all this stuff that comes in on you, don't you agree it's doing something to you? It's creating your character, and you can, you, can, you can fall under the weight of it and say, I give up. Right. My head just went boot camp. We, we were out there doing our stuff with our rifles, and this one guy says, I quit. And I thought, you don't say you quit. You can't quit. He quit. We never saw him again because they had to get him out of there because he, didn't, he would have influenced the rest of us. But he quit. <coughs> Everlasting weight of glory beyond all measure. You can't measure it. Excessively surpassing all comparisons. There's no comparison. What, what I've been through this past month, what you've been through this past month, no comparison to what's coming. Right. You can't compare right. it. It's like you're going to forget about it. The Bible says when a woman is in labor, I don't know nothing about it. But when that baby is born, they say, he says, you forget about it. Yeah. I guess so, because you go have another one. <laughs> <laughs> right. You women or something. All right. Excessively surpassing all comparison, all calculations. A vast and transcendent glory and blessedness never to cease. Oh, the good stuff is never to cease. This bad stuff is going to cease. Yes. That's something to look up, look up to and look, look, look forward to. The next verse, Willie. Since we consider and look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that we see, this is temporary. It's brief. It's fleeting. But the things that are invisible are deathless. They won't die. They're everlasting. Those good things that we don't see. That's the things we need to keep our eyes on. And then go right on into the fifth chapter, Willie 5.1. Five, five, I think that's the next verse anyway. See, I read on afterwards and I said, this is getting good. For we know that if the tent, this thing right here, which is our earthly home, is destroyed, dissolved, which it's being destroyed day by day. It sounds like a very negative thing, but... Because the sin came into the world and the curse entered in, man dies. That's all there is to it. But you don't have to die so soon if you stick with the Lord and you stick with his program. Our earthly home is being destroyed, dissolved. We have from God a building. I got this, but we have from God a building, a house not made with hands. It's eternal in the heavens. It's going to last forever. Next verse, Willie. Here indeed, in this present abode, this thing right here, we sigh and groan inwardly. How many times have I said, that's a sigh. You know, the lady didn't like my fence. And we groan. Groan inwardly. Because we yearn to be clothed over. We yearn to put on our celestial body just like a garment, to be fitted out with our heavenly dwelling. When, I, when uh, my daughter got married, we went to the uh, clothier, whatever you call it, and he fitted me out. I'm not used to getting fitted out. Last time I got fitted out was boot camp, and they put a different kind of thing on me. But he fitted me out. What did he say, Missy? He says, you're going to be smoking. I said, all right, whatever that means. I got in front of that mirror, and I was smoking. <laughs> I said, how did he do this to me? But you let the professionals do it, and they can do you up. Yes, sir. <laughs> Losing track. <laughs> heavenly dwelling. To be fitted out with our heavenly dwelling. So there's a dwelling, there's a body coming that's far surpassing what we got now. Next verse, Willie. 
putting it on, we may not be found naked without a body. Next verse. For while we are still in this tent, we groan. I can agree with that. You can agree with that. We groan under the burden. And we sigh deeply, weighed down, depressed, oppressed. Not that we want to put off the body. I don't want to get out of here. Not tonight. The clothing of the spirit. Or not that we want to put off the body. The clothing of the spirit. My, my spirit's in here. I'm clothed. This is my body. I don't want to get out of here tonight. But rather that we would be further clothed so that what is mortal, this dying body, may be swallowed up by life after the resurrection. You know, when I sit here and I listen to that, it's like, well, that sounds good, but, you know, tomorrow I got to do this, this, and I got to cut grass Saturday, and I'm not really thinking about that body. But it, it do us good to stop and think about that body, because then the discouragement that wants to come won't be able to light so heavily on us, because we keep our, our eyes on God and what His promises are. Yes. Willie, I know everybody's heard this, but go to Job chapter 1. Uh, 114, Job 114. And even though we've all heard it, I'm just going to go ahead and read it anyway. And there came a messenger, messenger to Rick and said, The oxen were plowing, and the donkey, just keep going, Willie, and the donkeys feeding beside them. And the Sabians swooped down upon them and took away the animals. Indeed, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The fire of God, lightning, has fallen from the heavens and has burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them, and I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The Chaldeans divided into three bands and made a raid upon the camels and have taken them away, yes, and have slain the servants with the edge of the sword. And I alone have escaped to tell you. Can it get worse? While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, Your sons and your daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And behold, there came a great whirlwind from the desert and smote the four corners of the house. And it fell upon the young people, and they're all dead. And I alone have escaped to tell you. Then Job arose and rent his robe and shaved his head, and fell down upon the ground, and did what? Are you kidding me? What else are you going to do? You might as well just worship God. When I'm sitting there in my seat, and I don't know if I can get to the other side of the prison, my lay's got strength, I feel good, I can make it, God's in my legs, God gives me a way, He's going to make me do it. Somebody's coming, I better stop singing. As soon as they leave, I'm going to start singing again. All right. And now for the good news. Here's the good news. He don't change. He don't change. Now, I can attach something to this. I might have a little bit of time here. Malachi 3.6 you know, you got to establish it with the Word of God. I said, He don't change. I said that because He said that. Yes, Malachi 3 6, Willie. Who hasn't heard this? I, this is who I am. I'm the Lord. I do not change. Amen. Oh, that is why you, O sons of Jacob, are not consumed. Because oh, yeah. I don't change. Amen. That's why we're not consumed, because He don't change. That's right. Hebrews 13 8. Yeah. Hebrews 13, 8, Willie. Jesus Christ, the Messiah, he's always the same. Yesterday, today, yes, and forever to the ages. So what's he going to be like a hundred years from now? The same way he was a hundred years ago, the same way he was when he walked the streets of Jerusalem. Well, how was he? Well, open that book and read how he was. 
And I love what, what, what Jesus said to Philip. And Philip said, Master, show us the Father, and it would, it would suffice. That'll be sufficient. And I think he got a little ticked at Philip. He says, Philip, have I been with you all this time and you don't know who I am? If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. So let me ask you, what is the Father like? He's exactly like Jesus because Jesus is exactly like him. So what is he like? Is he, is he one that's going to hold my sins against me? He ain't going to do it. You know, Jesus didn't hold nothing against anybody. He gave the Pharisees a hard time for a good cause. They deserved it. But he didn't hate the Pharisees. And he's the same way today. And that goes with one other verse, Acts, Acts 10, 38, Willie. This, this verse, is I've heard it all my life, but it's really become, it's just, it's dear to me. Talking about how, they, they were talking about Jesus, how God anointed and consecrated Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with strength and ability and power. How he went about doing good. He went about doing good. That's what he's like. So he's going around today doing good. He's not going around trying to get you. He's not trying to stick something on you. David said, Lord, if you kept a list, who could stand? If he kept a list of the stupid things that I do or things that I say, I can't stand. But he doesn't do that. He doesn't keep a list. Curing all who were harassed and oppressed by the power of the devil, for God was with him. You know what it means to be oppressed? You're oppressed by someone who has authority over you. Well, wait a minute, the devil doesn't have authority over us. Well, before Jesus got here, he did, because Adam gave it to him. And today, you can give it to him. See, he'll usurp authority. He'll take authority that doesn't belong to him, and then you're going to be oppressed by him. And he's going to oppress you. He's going to harass you. But that verse right there, and I, I, I say this, it's like you, you got three men because, see, when they, when they walked up to Abraham, it, it was men that walked up to him. But you got the Father took the Holy Spirit and anointed Jesus with the Holy Spirit. So here's God and Jesus. And then they went around doing good and healing. So he's the same. So he's healing today. But... Yeah, I don't know many people that get healed, though. Well, that's what he said. But you have to, you have to really meditate that verse. But it, it makes it so personal and so simple when they're, they're going around together. It's like two buddies going around together doing the same thing, healing. And Jesus did do nothing his father didn't tell him to do. And to wrap it up, 1 Corinthians First Corinthians fifteen fifty one, Willie. This is the big change. Take notice. I'm going to tell you a mystery, a secret truth, an event decreed by the hidden purpose or counsel of God. We shall not all fall asleep. We're not all going to die. I had a pastor that didn't want to go into the rapture because he wanted to die and see what it's like. He got his wish. As a matter of fact, he was singing. He was singing at the time. He died just like that. He was singing, I'll fly away. Fell on the ground and flew away. We shall not all fall asleep in death, but we shall all be changed. That's that change that we're looking for. I don't want same no more. Now I want change. And we're going to be transformed. Next verse, Willie. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the sound of the last trumpet call, for a trumpet will sound, I guess that's the first trumpet, and the dead in Christ will be raised imperishable, free, and immune from decay. Big, big changes are coming. And then we shall be changed, transformed. That'll be the next trumpet. So when you hear the trumpet... I guess you take a certain stance. I don't know what you do. Get ready, you know. To, 
But when you hear the second trumpet, then you get changed. And that's the change we're after. That final change. Now change happens every day. But I, I don't want to be negative and mention all the bad stuff that's happened. But it, it changes us. And it, it pressurizes us. And it actually brings us to our knees at times. Because it's gotten so intense lately that I, I don't know how to describe it. I, it's never been like this before in my lifetime. I've been a Christian for, well, since 1968, however many years that is, and it has never been this intense. I'm not saying something's about to happen. I'm not saying that because something ain't about to happen. Something's already happening, and it is intense. It hurts, but, and you know, I left out an important verse. Um, I guess, I guess, uh, it's not in my notes. <laughs> it was in my old notes. But maybe Pastor Bob knows. It's the verse about, and now i got a, a blank. But it's good. Awesome. It's in here somewhere. And uh, that's all i got to say about change. All right? Great job. All right. Great job.